Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Welcome back to the channel. Pleasant surprise this afternoon. We've got Nickel playing with one of his favorite toys, and uh, behind him a rare appearance from Quarter. Quarter's our epileptic cat. She kind of doesn't give a crap about anything. Until Nickel ticks her off and then it's on. Spatulas aren't compatible with computers. I recently had my weirdest IT help desk call and thought of no better place than here. And Uncle Reddit's channel. The person in question, let's call them user, called the service desk and was rather distressed that their computer randomly died and wouldn't boot back up. Me. Please, could you explain what happened at the time of the shutdown? User. Well, I was on a Teams call and dawdling around, as you do, when the spatula I was playing with accidentally got snagged on the USB port of the machine. I definitely don't think this had anything to do with it, and was a complete coincidence. 10 seconds of complete silence. Me. Please, could I ask if this was a metal spatula or a plastic one? User. Yes, it was a metal one. So, you don't think the metal thing making contact with the USB port had anything to do with anything? That would be one heck of a coincidence. We've had an incident with a USB stick. This story pertains to an incident which happened at a high school in the early 2000s. I was on work experience and shadowing the tech support. Context of the story. This high school is located in an impoverished area where the majority of families are in receipt of some sort of social security, welfare, or food stamps. The school itself didn't have a fantastic budget, so it was for the most part still using chalkboards, 20-year-old textbooks, etc. In regards to computing, the school had no more than around 25 PCs running Windows 95, which were for use by staff only. Therefore, a good portion of the school population, roughly 1,200 pupils, had never used a computer before. There was an old tech support guy who had been there since the late 80s, who had been trying to establish some form of computer literacy class for several years to no success. Fortunately, the school was awarded a very generous grant by the local government to modernize. This resulted in over the summer vacation the school purchasing roughly 150 brand new PCs with Windows XP installed, and the full suite of Word, Publisher, and PowerPoint. Each teaching room had also been installed with interactive whiteboards with projectors, and a room had been converted into a computer room to run the computer literacy classes, which the old tech support guy had wanted. Unfortunately, he was extraordinarily upset, as a new tech guy, about 20 years old, had been taken on to replace him, and had been in charge of the procurement of the new PCs, their installation, and the ongoing tech support. Old tech guy had been assigned to become a full-time tutor for computer literacy, for both the children and fellow staff. To be fair, he did enjoy this job but absolutely hated the new tech guy. Story. One afternoon, the new tech guy received a call from the old tech guy stating, We've had an incident with a USB stick. Can you come down, please? We arrived at the computer room a few minutes later to see nothing short of minor destruction. The computer room featured a nest of computers on a donut-shaped table, round with a large hole in the middle, in the middle of the room. In the middle of this nest was a mess of kettle leads for the monitors and PC, Ethernet cables and wires for various peripherals. At least that's how it had been left before this incident. What welcomed us was all six of the tower PCs plus their CRT monitors had all fallen into the hole at the middle of the nest. Apparently what had transpired, an overeager student had tried plugging their USB stick into a USB slot at the front of the PC and had managed to push it off the back of the desk. When this PC fell off the back of the table into the center of the nest, the weight of this tower dragged the CRT monitor with it. The combined weight of these hitting the web of wires in the center of this nest had led to a chain reaction where the rest of the PCs and monitors were all pulled into the hole in the middle, not to mention a few of the keyboards and mice had also been dragged in. The old tech came across to the new tech smiling like a Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland, asking that the new tech fix the problem. We spent the next hour untangling the mess of wires and extracting the PCs and monitors from the middle of the nest. Some genius had screwed the desks to the floor. Eventually, the final inventory of damage was as follows. Three CRT monitors had become irreparably damaged. Five hard drives were damaged beyond economic repair. Two of the power ports required replacing. Three of the tower frames needed repairing. One graphics card had shattered along with damage to the motherboard. One keyboard was damaged beyond repair. 
One mouse needed, of all things, a replacement ball. I have no idea why. Would you believe it? But the USB stick survived the destruction. I stayed with the new tech until the end of the shift, at which I went home. After all, I wasn't being paid. I arrived 9am the next morning to discover that he had spent the entire night replacing the hardware. He'd cannibalized from other PCs around the building, and reinstalling the OS plus the various software required. This was the experience that led to me not choosing a career in tech support. A week of experience had been enough, but I wanted to share it nonetheless. Somebody's being camera shot today. Yeah, I've seen a lot of that in different work situations, uh, not just in tech support, but, you know, somebody younger will be brought in to deal with certain things uh, that were added on. The new budget from the local government probably included somebody to help set up and run this new stuff. Unfortunately for the old tech guy, uh, but it's not the new tech guy's fault, so not sure why you hated him for that. And as far as the mouse ball goes, I can tell you right now why it needed to be replaced. There are a few kids who would steal the mouse balls to play with them. Uh? They'd use them like a super ball, you know, just kind of bounce it around and also to make life difficult for the next person that goes to use the mouse. Kids. My earbuds don't work. As the resident programming and technology enthusiast of my family, and sometimes the less tech-savvy neighbors and acquaintances come to me with whatever tech problem they may be having at the time, using me as some sort of rudimentary tech support. And today I was approached with yet another tech issue. Our neighbor came to me asking for help, since his new wired earbuds didn't work correctly. He wanted to listen to music on his phone, but the phone still played music from the speakers. Naturally, this causes problems with others who may not share your musical taste, or just might not want to listen to your favorite song on repeat. I asked my neighbor to show me the issue, and what he does is absolutely baffling. He goes into the sound settings and plays the music through the ringtone selector, which then plays the music through the speakers. <laughs> Because it treats that specific output as a ringtone, and ringtones play through the speakers to make sure you can hear them, and do not miss a call. The ringtone volume was maxed out while the media volume was set to zero. I set the media volume to a reasonable level and opened up YouTube to play a random video to check my hypothesis, and as expected, the video plays through the earbuds, and the speakers don't let out even the slightest electrical hiss. I install a music player app for easier access to audio files on the phone and hand the phone back, the issue is resolved and I'm given undeserved praise for doing practically nothing. I don't know about practically nothing, but I know there's a lot of people out there who just don't understand some of the basic stuff when you're trying to play music or videos on a phone, and, uh, and I'm sure it was very helpful. After all, you got him the music that he wanted, in his earbuds, and saved everybody else from his playlist. How was I able to reset my password then? Here I go with another one. Every workplace has that one person who forgets their password after a week or two of vacation. God help me. I get a Teams message from a user stating that she's not able to log in. Here I am assuming VPN. So I figured, okay, I can reset her AD password and she can get into VPN and cash it to the laptop later. No. She forgot her password to log into her work laptop. Mind you that we are working remotely and the laptops are not connected to the domain unless they're connected to the company VPN. The following is what happened. Me. Hey, so I went ahead and reset your password. Try logging in again. User. Okay, I see the welcome screen spinning, then it says incorrect password. Me. Oh, you're attempting to sign into the laptop itself? Gotcha. Let's go ahead and try the last known good password. User. I'll try again, but it keeps saying incorrect. I've been gone for two weeks. Me. That sounds like a well-rested vacation. User. It says the password is incorrect. I don't understand. It shows the welcome loading message, then says incorrect password. Why does it do that? Me. This happens when the laptop is trying to check the entered password against what it remembers. Note. I put things in layman terms all the time, but this time it went nowhere. User. Okay, but I tried the reset password as well, and that didn't work. Me. Unfortunately, that won't work until we get to a later step. For now, we have to try to sign into the laptop using the last known password. User. No, there was something else you did last time where I worked remotely and you reset my password and it worked. Me. Yes, I do believe I assisted, but in that situation we had you sign into the laptop using your old credentials, sign into the VPN using the temporary password, and you were able to change the password by doing Control alt delete Change Password, remember? User. No, that's not what happened. You changed it and I was able to log in right away. I was getting ticked off at this point. We have a specific way of having users change their passwords while working remotely, and she was telling me that's not how it happened. She kept asking me why it worked last time, and it wasn't this time. 
I kept reiterating that the laptop must be connected to the company network to check against your new account credentials. She wasn't having it, so I offered a solution until she could come into the office to have her log into the laptop while connected to the company's network. I can't stand when people can't take accountability. You tell me you went on vacation for a week last time and it happened then. You forgot. Now you take a two-week vacation and forget your password again. I'm trying to help, but you telling me that I did something differently when I'm telling you that entering your cash password as step one is very frustrating. Edit. I had the user go into the office to have the laptop contact our domain, and I made sure they disconnected from it and logged into their laptop to ensure the cached credentials were working. The user also said, Thank you for being patient with me. Eh, it's the least I could do. Yeah, people's memories are very fallible. Whatever steps you take, whatever your protocol is, I'm sure she remembers it in a completely different fashion from what reality is. Figures. I'm two-thirds of the way through this video, and every dog in the neighborhood, including one of the ones in my house, decide that now is a great time to have a chorus. Almost out of scope. From viewer Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. Being a level 2 IT desk, we get overflow calls from the level 1 IT desk from time to time. This is one of the calls I had gotten that seemed to be out of scope at first until I verified in the system barcode. Even doing enterprise equipment rollout, it is possible to still get some of these calls. IT is me and you as user. Remember, the names used are not the actual names to protect identities. IT, thanks for calling Deployment Service Help Desk. This is BKEP. Can I get your name and alias? User, hello. Me, hello, this is BKEP from Deployment Service Help Desk. How can I help you? Hi, this is user. I'd gotten an email that listed an asset tag barcode and mentioned replacement. The barcode in the email doesn't match the asset tag barcode on the standing desk that was provided. Me. What's your alias? User provides alias. Your name is User? Yes, that's correct. Can I get the best phone number to contact you in case we get disconnected? They provide me the phone number. Thanks. Let me get some information up. Sure. I pull up the asset manager and load the customer screen with email sent. You said that the asset tag in the email doesn't match the asset tag on the standing desk? User. Yes, that's correct. What is the asset tag? User. Do you want the one asset tag from the standing desk or the email? Let's start with the asset tag from the email. They provide that to me. Me. Searching the asset tag barcode and asset management. That asset tag is coming back to an HP 600 D2 desktop. Can you read what it says in the email? User reads the email. Then there's the asset tag that I gave you that doesn't match the standing desk. Me. That's because the HP 600 G2 desktop will be replaced. User, so they're not replacing the standing desk? Me, no, we're not replacing the standing desk. The computer will be replaced. The computer is going to be replaced with the HP 600 G6 desktop, which is a newer model. User, why is the computer being replaced? Is there something wrong with it? Me, it's just routine as the computer reaches the end of their support life. It's then replaced with a newer model. User, do you know how the computer will be shipped to me? Me. It's typically going to be shipped through UPS. User. What form do I need to submit to move forward with a replacement? Me. There should be an email that provides a link for the form to fill out. It does show it was sent out about an hour ago. User. I haven't gotten that email yet. Only just recently gotten an email about evacuation steps and drills. Me. Should be there any minute, and it provides the steps to follow on how to submit the form. User. I'll have to look for it later. It's too early in the morning on a Monday to deal with this. I have so much work to do already to deal with this. Me. I understand that. User. I guess that means I need to work on backing up the computer and then reconnect everything. Once I get everything set up the way I want it and get used to it, they always must replace it. Me. The computer is just being replaced with a newer model since it is at its end of support. Remember, you can always give us a call for help. We can help you back up the old computer and restore to the new computer. Even help with setting up the new computer to your liking. User. Thanks, I'll do that. Is there anything else I can help you with? User. That should be it for now. Thanks. You're welcome. Have a good day. You never know what calls you might get in IT, but just because it seems out of scope of IT at first, doesn't mean it's out of scope by the end of the call. Hey, at least you were patient with the guy and willing to help him out, and at the same time that user was willing to listen to what you actually had to say and kind of let it process and realize that, yeah, you're just getting a new computer, your desk is fine. Good for you for not flipping out on them. And thanks for sharing this story with us, Brandon. I really appreciate it. Hey, if you like this video, do me a favor. Go ahead and click this one on the screen.
I think you're going to like this one too. See ya.